Hey, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding and really breaking this down for you in a step-by-step -step fashion. And for those of you that really wanna cash in on crowdfunding, you want a way in order to raise funds for whether that's a nonprofit organization, whether that's a personal cause that could be related to education costs, travel bills, emergency costs, memorial, funeral, whatever it is, GoFundMe is literally the number one website out there when it comes to crowdfunding. And in today's video, I wanted to go through some of the GoFundMe tips which you can use in order to get funding. If you're struggling to know exactly what you gotta do in order to raise capital online, in order to raise funding on GoFundMe, you're gonna wanna watch to the end of this video. So many great golden nuggets, tips, tricks, things you can employ in order to raise more on GoFundMe, and most importantly, to do it in a short span of time. Rather than huntering around and trying to figure this all out yourself, listen to this video, tune in, take notes, and I think you're gonna like it. And if you do, give me a, a thumbs up and most certainly subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's coming up right after this. And a lot of the times I talk with potential students and they're, they're getting into like getting really frustrated, they're getting really angry because they shared their GoFundMe campaign on Facebook or another social network, but for whatever reason, no one donated to their campaign. The thing about Facebook is a very small percentage of people actually see the status updates that you put out there. So you have to make sure that this is actually in front of people's eyes, that they are not only aware that you're doing a fundraiser, but also that this is something that is important to you. This is just some you know fad or just something that you kind of threw up there or put together this is a real need and something that you are concentrating, you know, a dedicated amount of time on. So you want to make sure that you um, directly message people on Facebook about your GoFundMe campaign. You want to make sure that you take out your phone and you make phone calls or you send text messages or you send emails. Make these people individually aware that this is actually a campaign that you're running, the reason why you need the funds, and share a little bit there of also the story, which I wanna get into in just a second. But basically, the, the relationship that you have with other people is going to be the foundation of whether or not they are actually willing to contribute to your campaign. And in addition, if they recognize that this is actually a big event in your life, or this is something that's important to you, this is a dire need, or this is something that you are basically asking them for, it can always be, I think, a little bit humbling to do that. Most people are not willing to reach out to their own social network on a GoFundMe fundraiser because they feel like it's kind of like charity and they feel like they're begging or pleading. But unfortunately, if you're not willing to do that, Crowdfunding in this capacity is probably not going to work for you because it's very rare that you're just gonna see a huge influx of donations into your GoFundMe campaign when you haven't done anything to sort of prime the pump or to seed the funding a little bit to get some attention there. And this story is what you're going to use to actually communicate your cause to other people. Other people, you know, they don't wanna to listen to you plead or beg for money. If someone already knows you, like your family, they already have a pre-established relationship with you. You've done things together, you've maybe exchanged gifts in the past, you have shared memories, there's a pre-established relationship. So if you say something like, I really need money for this reason, they are far more likely to just like open their wallet and help you because there's that, that foundation of a relationship there. However, if you come to me or if you come to a stranger, if you come to someone else and you're like, hey, I need money for X, Y, and Z, you're probably gonna be like, ah, sorry, you know, I'm not really interested in you know giving money to charity or something like that. However, if you tell a compelling story in terms of why it is you need this money, in terms of the things that happened to you that led to this moment in your life and you allow someone to empathize with you in that way. And nonprofits do this all the time. I'm sure you've turned on the television before and you've seen the story of a little boy that's in Africa that now needs badly needed education and with your donation of $5 per month, it's going to help that individual. Nonprofits know that storytelling is a way that you make people care about a cause. And this is also what I teach to many different nonprofit organizations. So in order to get Get people to care about this cause, you have to wrap all of this into a compelling story. It doesn't necessarily, I'm not saying you have to be like, you know, write a novel or something like this, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna show people visually and also using the campaign text what it is that happened, how that made you feel, what are the different costs that are, you know, resultant of that, how can people help, and, and tell the story of the reason why you need these funds and the impacts that those funds are going to make, the before and after, the radical shift that someone can make in your life or in, you know, the, the cause if you're a nonprofit. 
the, the most important thing that people need to feel before they give money online is number one, they need to feel a sense of empathy with whoever it is that they're going to support. By empathy, I mean, it's, it's, uh, empathy is a little bit different than sympathy. These words are kind of used interchangeably, but they're a little bit different. So sympathy happens in your head. It's intellectual. When your friend says something like, they got an F on a test, or they had a performance review at work and it didn't go so well, um, or your friend tells you maybe they got laid off, right? Intellectually, you know that's a difficult thing to go through. And maybe you've never gone through that yourself, but you know intellectually it's a difficult thing and you feel sympathy for that individual, right? They say, man, that, that really sucks. I can understand why that would be so hard for you. There's, there's a lot of like logic that goes behind sympathy. It's, it's really just saying like, I recognize your problem. I recognize the difficult, d difficulties and the hardships that you're going through. Empathy is a bit different because empathy is more emotionally based. While sympathy happens in your head, empathy happens in your heart. And what you begin to actually, I would say the difference is that you actually visibly feel emotions for your friend. When your friend gets laid off and you put yourself in their shoes and you imagine what that's gonna to mean to them for the next couple of months, how they're not gonna be able to support their family, how that's gonna set them back in terms of their own life goals, and just kind of what a nice person this individual is, how hardworking and honest and earnest they are, and now they're laid off from their job, it makes you visibly feel, it makes you feel emotions about this other person who is not you. That's not your life. You're, you're feeling real emotions about someone else's life, right? And that's the kind of angle difference that you need when it comes to getting strangers to support your campaign, who you don't know. You don't want intellectual sympathy because they'll say, ah, that really sucks. And then they'll go and watch a YouTube video or they'll go on Netflix to distract themselves from that, that kind of a weird emotion, right? But if they actually feel empathy for you, if they, they see themselves in you, they relate with your story, then they're gonna be more willing to be like, wow, I'm gonna actually, this, this is a really great guy. Like, I'm gonna actually throw him like 20 bucks. You know, I think this is actually gonna help him. I, you know, I, I don't mind, like, I feel better giving money than not. It, I, my value that feeling of doing something good for someone else instead of the actual just money being in my pocket. That decision is made when someone feels empathy for you and they feel a sense of distress about the situation that you're in. The tip that I have for you when it comes to GoFundMe is actually to understand what goes into a transaction and, and sort of get into the psychology of why someone is gonna give money and what they want out of that. Now that sounds very like woo woo, or like I guess it sounds very like highfalutin esoteric. So let me get a little bit more tangible. Um, I'm talking about appreciation and thanks. This is a strategy, I'm not just saying this. Um, this is actually a strategy that's going to make more people want to support your projects. So, why does someone give money to someone else and what do they want out of that transaction? Well, number one, it does different studies and the main reason why someone gives money is because number one, they feel empathy with you. They see your situation, they feel a sense of empathy like, wow, that must really suck or I went through something similar or I can only imagine how you would feel in that situation or how I would feel. They feel empathy, they also feel a little bit of distress because they see you sort of floundering there and they say, I wanna help out, I'm gonna do what little I can, I'm gonna give him 20 bucks and that's gonna hopefully help that situation a little bit. After that giving of money happens, they then want to feel good about that process. They wanna feel like they're a good person, they wanna feel like they're a charitable person and that's up to you to allow them to feel these things by being a by saying thank you, by saying what this means to you. What is their $20 contribution? What does that enable you to do on your mission trip? Or what does that enable you to do in your life? You have to be appreciative and thankful of the people that are giving you money. And actually by doing that, by also doing it publicly if possible on Facebook or in different mediums, you can actually get other people interested in what it is you're doing. So if someone just gave you, uh, you know, $100 and you publicly thank them and tell them what that means to you, then other people, other friends that are connected to you are gonna see that and they're then gonna check out your campaign and are more likely to support it because no one wants to be the first one to actually support a GoFundMe campaign. You can see some of the different stories here and these are the ones that are top and that are trending. Now some of these are many different amounts, right? So you got one that's like 
$86,000 here that's highlighted. And then you scroll all the way up and you got one that's 56,000. Doesn't make sense, does it? Like why is this one above uh, what this one, which actually has more funding, right? <clears throat> Good question. So this is really based on their algorithm, okay? And a lot of it is based on recency, but also a lot of it's based on velocity. So how quickly are pledges coming in? Uh, what is the CTR, the click-through rates? When someone goes to the project, do they donate? Um, how much do people care about that cause? How much is it being shared on social media? Your best chances of getting involved here and getting listed here will be number one, if you're getting lots of donations quickly. You can see here last donation one minute ago, right? 32 minutes ago, 44 seconds ago, 48 seconds ago. This one was eight minutes ago. And this is gonna determine your rankings. If you have uh, donations that are coming quickly and it's gonna hit that velocity of donations and you're gonna start to go up in the charts. In addition, they're also looking at how much campaigns are being shared um, of the people that come, how many donate, all those different metrics are gonna play into it, really important, and something that's gonna be more of a marketing kind of a, a realm. You also then have a similar kind of thing when it comes to these different categories. So let's take a look at education. And as we scroll here, you have more highlighted within the actual um, campaigns categories, so like medical fundraisers, memorial fundraisers, emergencies, nonprofits, education. So there's getting there's trending in the overall marketplace of GoFundMe. And then there are ones that are specific to a certain niche. For example, the one I'm trying to open up now are education fundraisers. So you could trend within your individual category, or you could trend overall on the GoFundMe sites, which again comes to velocity. And also um, that will determine whether or not you get into their newsletter. So they're kind of all integrated in that way. Now let's go to GoFundMe Heroes. I think this is actually really cool. So let me load this up here. So GoFundMe Heroes is obviously a lot larger of an initiative, but the main thing that you wanna take away is that this is an entire story with photos, text, there's even some video, right? And then GoFundMe itself, encouraging people to donate to that campaign. So if you want to get involved with something like this and you want to become more of a hero, you want to have um, you know, a bit more noteworthiness and you want more traffic and attention, it's going to come down to your story, which is what I talk about all the time, my friends, in the Crowdfunding Personal Expenses book, which I wrote, which you can check out at crowdcrux.com slash GoFundMe audio. I also have a free course on GoFundMe. You can go to crowdcrux.com. Um, slash GoFundMe. I believe that's the link. It might be a different link, but I think that's the link. Uh, and also obviously get way more in depth in the GoFundMe cash machine. So your story is so important and GoFundMe itself is demonstrating that. Look at that. They're, they put together this incredible story for this person, uh, in which they call a hero. So if you want to be seen as a hero, you need a story that is going to accompany that in some way. And then you're more likely to be selected by that. <clears throat> Some other things to notice as well, like on the actual page, which I think is really interesting. Um, this is, you know, your opportunity to tell the story. They make very prominent the share feature, which is why campaigns that are shared a lot, right, this one had 2,000 shares, are more likely to be trending and featured. And the donate button, which is, again, the more donors you get in a short period of time or more recent, the more likely you are um, to have a campaign that tends to be uh, supported in that way. And you can see all of the incredible donations. And just here's a great other exercise, and I'm kind of getting to beyond the point here, but here's a great other ex exercise. Go and look at the reasons why people are donating. So like, I believe girls' education will create a better world and help stop climate change. Again, higher order mission or need. Girls need to save the world and humanity. Again, higher order mission and need. Education is a great, great equalizer. Educating girls uh, changes an entire community. Again, higher order need. People give money to make impact. And that's referenced just even by looking through a lot of these comments. I want to empower, pay attention to the words, empower young people around the world to value education. That's a higher uh, order desire to make an impact, to put a dent in the universe, to cause change, to be a part of a mission, right? This is something where people are trying to make impact. So if your campaign can fit into that niche or that category, or you can draw people's attention to why this is going to make impact in some way in a larger sense, even if it's individualized, 
it will be so much more well received for other people. Being a GoFundMe beneficiary historically will raise a lot more money than if you're just running a campaign yourself. So I'm gonna talk about that in just a second, but for number one that I wanna talk about is to consider having someone else, we'll say a beneficiary, run the campaign for you. If you have a beneficiary or someone else who's running the campaign for you, it's gonna make it look way more inviting. And here's why. You could have a family member, you could have a friend, you could have someone else run this campaign on your behalf and vouch for you. Now, what does that mean? That means that they're gonna be like the face of the campaign, they're gonna be the one running and doing this fundraiser on your behalf, but you're gonna be the one who ends up able to have those funds in your bank account and use or meet whatever need it is that you have that are out there. So just a beneficiary is just like a really fancy word. I hate fancy words, man. It's just a big fancy word for someone else running a campaign on your behalf. And this is something that you can do. And when you do this, historically, you are going to raise more money when you're doing a GoFundMe or similar type of personal crowdfunding uh, platform or personal crowdfunding campaign. So what is the first thing that this does? Number one is what's called social proof, okay? Number two is trust slash credibility, right? And number three is participation. So we'll talk about what, what I mean by that but participation is almost encouraged more so. It almost seems kind of weird even if they don't participate in this campaign. So first of all, what is social proof? Social proof is when other people are taking action. For example, other people are supporting a charitable endeavor. Other people are dining at a particular restaurant. Other people are watching a new movie that came out or Squid Games on Netflix or whatever it is. And because other people are doing it, other people that see that are like, huh, that's kind of interesting. Social proof creates curiosity. It also lowers defensive barriers, creates trust, and it encourage, encourages participation. So when you have a beneficiary, other people see that and their friends, friends of friends, other people who stumble on this campaign are more likely to be receptive for it because they assume it's for a good cause, right? So social proof kind of gives that conclusion like it's for a good cause, okay? Now, I know that sounds very subtle, but stay with me. It gives that like mental conclusion that like, oh, this is a good cause. Because why would you raise money for someone else if it's not a good cause? It just doesn't make sense. If you're participating in a charity and you tell your friends, you know, this isn't my charity, but I'm volunteering for it. Do you want to get involved? Do you want to help with this? They're way more like, and that's actually called peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. They're way more likely to get involved and they're like, oh, this is for a good cause. This other person has gone through the story. They've already validated that. They already know this is a legitimate claim or this is something that's legitimate that people are gonna be raising money for. It makes a lot of sense to help them out. So what it does is it creates social proof so that when someone's running this on your behalf, instantly other people are more likely to take you seriously and more likely to become involved and donate because it seems legitimate. Number two, trust and credibility. Other people see that and they say, like, oh, this person has vouched for them. They seem way more credible. There's much more trustworthiness that the money is gonna to go to the right place versus you're just going out there, you're trying to raise money and you're just trying to shout from the rooftops to do this. Who the heck are you? They don't know. They don't know anything about you. They have to take the time to read your story, to see if what you're saying is legitimate or not, to look through the evidence, right? There are more hoops that they have to go through. So it also creates trust and credibility. And finally, participation. If a bunch of people are rallying around this individual and raising money on their behalf and you have mutual friends, it almost seems kind of weird for you just not to get involved because everyone else is. It's almost why birthday fundraisers on Facebook make so much funds. So this is like an example. This is obviously not on you know, GoFundMe, but we'll just say as an example here, um, B-Day fundraisers on Facebook, right? Why do they get so much traction? Why do they get people participating? because a common person is involved in that transaction. There's trust, credibility, social proof, going to an established organization. So people participate in droves. And you can do the exact same thing with GoFundMe by having a beneficiary. Meet your e-commerce partner, FulfillRight, the high-tech turnkey solution to store, package, and ship your products worldwide. With over 100 rave reviews and a five-star rating on Trustpilot, Google, and Shopify, it's no wonder they're called the most trusted name in order fulfillment. Wondering what all the hype's about? Get a free custom quote from Fulfill Right today. Link in the description. I got this email um, about a week ago where this person had written to me and they had purchased the Audible version of my book, Crowdfunding Personal Expenses. They designed the campaign themselves for GoFundMe. 
you can um, see a little bit of their message there. But basically, they did everything and um, they launched it. They shared it on Facebook. Within an hour of going live, they had 600 donations. So they upped the goal to 2,000. Within a few hours, the donations are up to 1,100 upped it to 4,000 and stopped there. Two and a half days later, they have 5,724 in GoFundMe and $200 donation through PayPal, so almost $6,000. And then at the time of recording this video for the YouTube channel, it is $7,539. So this is pretty impressive. Um, and this is really something where it's just by, you know, adding a few little things to your campaign can make a massive difference as well as doing the right stuff in the right order. So number one, um, if you're interested in that Audible book, that's available via Audible, crowd, uh, crowdfunding personal expenses, I can link that up in the description. In addition, um, they're also now doing things like letters to friends and families and clients and colleagues, right? So this is really good. And it's also something that I include in the crowdfunding, uh, sorry, the GoFundMe cash machine. The GoFundMe cash machine, I include templates when it comes to email outreach. And um, really, how do you reach out to your friends and family? How do you make it show that people who are reading this feel a little bit more personalized and like why it is that you're doing this? So this is really awesome that he is um, going out there and outreaching and doing this kind of stuff. If you want to basically find out how to write this or you want to template for this yourself as well as some other um, outreach you can do. I have those in the GoFundMe cash machine, which is a paid uh, course. So I got a coaching call there in a sec, which is a paid course. But that being said, I want to give a little bit of feedback here. So that is also helpful for you if you are not you know, interested in enrolling in that or in these other things. So first of all, when it comes to this, looking at his um, campaign page, one of the things he did here was post a video, right? So a video is always gonna be a little bit more engaging than just having text. So one of the things you could really simply do here would be to post a video like this on your GoFundMe page. This video had about 131 views. That tells me that people are interested in hearing from him, that he has good relationships with his friends and family. So likely, if he was able to post that on YouTube just alone and people who came to this page watched this video, if he has a Facebook page, it would be really great if he was able to either create a room here, a chat room, or if he did a live stream right, of some kind, if he's maybe doing a live video to describe what it is that he is doing, uh, why it is he's raising money, what is this going for, these kinds of things. Or he could, this is kind of new functionality, he could create a room. Um, so this would be, you would be inviting certain people, right, who's invited in this room, and you could coordinate, it's kind of like, you know, a group call almost, where you could coordinate them, other people who can help your project or help you share different things, right? So I gotta make sure I'm not going live there right now. So that would be, that would be two easy ways that he could start to make use of that. If his friends and family, he hasn't reached all of them, he could go and create a room. In addition, uh, if he wasn't interested in raising more money, I can completely understand that because if you have a certain amount that you need and you're doing that, like it can feel a little bit guilty sometimes for you to raise more than that amount, right? At the same time, um, I think this is something where it's a really case by case basis. For some people, more money does help more. In other cases, it's not, you know, so you could always, if you wanted to say the extra amount that we raised that I don't um, need for my own personal needs, we could donate to this particular nonprofit, right? So let's just say that he ends up raising, you know, a thousand dollars more than he needs. He could technically donate that money to a nonprofit organization that will help with a similar illness to the one that he um, undergoes, which means basically then he um, can, can continue to help out other people. That you got to hit. Obviously, you got to get the person's attention. Um, attention can come from a relationship, for example, where this person is relevant in my life, thus I'm going to pay attention to them versus a stranger, probably not going to pay attention to them. Another could be a credibility indicator, like this is a news story. Oh, I should pay attention to this because the news is talking about it, right? So maybe your story is being shared by the news or by someone else who recommended it, or you see it on social media. So there are different ways in which you can get someone's attention, whether that's through social media, through an email, through a text, through a phone call, um, through a news story that you are a part of on Reddit, a social bookmarking site, any of those types of mediums. I'm going to assume just for now, because it kind of goes beyond the scope of this video, you already have someone's attention. 
what happens next. What ends up happening next is that in order to get someone to consider giving money or donating money, you first need to create this feeling of empathy. Now, why is that? The reason is that as human beings, we are programmed to really only care about our friends, our family, and maybe some people in the external universe, but we can't care about everyone that's on this planet. Let's be honest, your mind would explode. There are billions of people on this planet. You can't, like just from an emotional standpoint, care about everyone, your emotions would be like this, right? So your mind will tune out the majority of people that are on this planet. However, when you hear about a story, when you see a story, when you um, not firsthand, but secondhand are told something, all of a sudden you start to feel emotions in the same way that if you see a news story about someone, you're going to feel fear or anger or sad or guilty or those different things. If you watch a movie about a character that's not even real, you're going to feel real emotions at the end of the day. Storytelling is what humans have beings have developed in order to relay an experience that happened to me in the past. Dude, you're not gonna believe this thing that happened to me in the past, right? I tell a story to you and you feel comparable emotions to the way that I felt, or at least you can sympathize and if not empathize with that thing that happened to me in the past. So what you're gonna do is you're going to use storytelling as a vehicle to get other people to empathize with your need, your cause, or whatever it is that you're trying to promote, okay? I know it sounds a little bit Machiavellian, but I'm kind of assuming that you have something good that you're trying to raise money for, okay? So let's just say that you do that. You tell a story of some kind. What happened? What created that need? What's the before? And also, what's the potential for the person who is giving money to have an impact in that story? If you tell, a compelling story and researchers have found this out. I did a YouTube uh, video on this a long time ago, uh, but there have been studies done where they tell a story to a person, two sets of stories, and one story has a compelling main character that's going through something difficult, right? And the other is just kind of a bland story where nothing is really happening. With the bland story, most people are bored or tuning out. With the compelling story, <laughs> rapt attention, right? And also, they start to feel emotions that are similar to the main character in the story. And if they relate with that character, and then later the researcher asks that person to donate money for a particular cause related to that, more often than not, people are willing to. And it even got to the point where people were able to predict, the researchers were able to predict if that person would give money based on fMRI, the skin conductance, um, and the, the emotions essentially they were feeling based on the, the readings that they had when they were doing the experiment. So lo and behold, when you can allow someone to experience a story, they are gonna start to feel emotions about that story. So you need to first start with that. If you don't trigger that feeling of empathy or sympathy, it's very difficult for you then to have asked someone to successfully give money or donate money. Once you've done that first component, the second building block, so it's like we're building something here, it's a second building block, right? The second building block is that person has to feel a sense of distress. What do I mean by that? Because like that's kind of a negative emotion, distress, right? So let me break that down. When someone is experiencing the story, it's not enough for them just to be like, wow, that's a really nice story, right? No. <laughs> In order for the person to feel any kind of way obligated or wanting to give money, they have to feel a sense of distress. Now, what does distress mean? Distress could be a bunch of different emotions. It could be the emotion of guilt. It could be the emotion of injustice. It could be the feeling of anger, frustration, the need to make a difference, the feeling like my own identity is being attacked, the feeling like this is just wrong, right? And it goes against their morals, something in that nature. You gotta trigger, if this is like a combination lock, you gotta trigger one of those emotions. If you do that successfully, what's gonna end up happening after someone experiences your story is, they're gonna have this feeling and they're not gonna know what to do with it. It's almost like this energy is building up inside you. You're like, man, I'm just freaking angry. I'm frustrated, I'm rah, rah, right? I feel a high intensity of emotion. What ends up happening then is they try to look for an outlet. So if you can't write the injustice right in front of your eyes, or you can't speak up, or you can't do anything, 
then there are other ways, of course, to be able to have an impact. And one of those is to donate money to a particular cause. So this is really when people begin to even think about donating money. And the question then becomes, if I do make a contribution, if I donate, if I help in this way, is it going to have an effect, a meaningful effect on that outcome? And if the answer is yes, then more often than not, people are interested in donating money. We're gonna have the campaign title. We're gonna say test, beneficiary. Who are you raising money for? Myself or someone else, not a nonprofit. We'll say accident and emergencies. And I'm gonna say I'm raising money as an individual. So I'm the same, the sole person who is running this campaign. Or you could raise money as a team and you can invite other people to raise money on behalf of this particular cause. So we're just gonna say an individual. And as a reminder, the platform fee charges a transaction fee of 2.9% plus 30 cents per donation, and that's to cover credit card processing. But GoFundMe also will ask your donors upon checkout if the donor would be willing to donate to GoFundMe. And that's how they are able to cover their costs, basically, is they have a different model where they're not charging a fee for you as the organizer, they're charging a fee to your donors. Um, and it's kind of a suggested donation or like a tip, if you will. So that's, that's kind of they, how they monetize the site. We're gonna click next, get to the next page here. We'll add a cover photo or video. So this was really gonna help when it comes to making your page stand out. So I'm just gonna upload a random photo here. Click save. I should probably reposition it, but this is just for an example. Then we'll say why we're raising money. And on the right here are some suggestions, right? Who are you raising money for and why? I'm raising money for this individual, raising money for these reasons. And you'll want to put a lot of thought into this and ideally, you know, um, upload some photos if possible. We'll say that's there, complete. Now we have to go and set up, right? And we'll remind you when to set up withdrawals once you get your first donation. All I mean when I say audit is to just kind of go through the campaign with a fine tooth comb and looking at it, not in the lens of the creator, but looking at it through the lens of a particular donor. So certain things like, is the campaign formatted correctly? Are there spelling errors? Um, when it comes to the video or when it comes to the images on the campaign, does it actually show proof of the story or does it make me my eye and capture my attention? Is this something that's getting me excited about this? Or is this something that's drawing me in? Or is it something that's causing an emotion of some kind? Is the entire story communicated? Uh, succinctly with this particularly crowdfunding campaign. When I look at the title, does the title make sense? Sometimes I see titles I'm like that, would, no one would understand what that means beyond the actual creator. Try to look at this from the perspective of someone who has never met you before and to do a campaign audit. And the other thing would be making sure as you're doing the campaign audit that you just have the full range of all of the information which you can relate it to your ask. So sometimes I'll see someone and just kind of type up something very quickly and they put it out there, right? And they hope that that will raise money. But more often than not, the people that actually spend a little bit of time thinking through how can I communicate this well to someone else so they might be interested in donating or be helping with this particular cause, more likely than not is gonna be much better when it comes to raising money. Oh man, oh man, that was a lot of great information when it comes to GoFundMe. And if you really want to continue to explore, continue to invest in your education, and really the more that you learn the things, the science, if you will, behind crowdfunding, the easier it is for you to get those results that you want. So in addition to this video, I also have a free GoFundMe course, which you can check out as a link in the description. If you want to check that out, you can go to crowdcrux.com slash GoFundMe course. That link will lead you to a free course where you can enter your name and email and begin learning AS SAP about some of the strategies and techniques when it comes to smashing your goal with GoFundMe. In addition, I have a great uh, book out there on Audible called Crowdfunding Personal Expenses. This actually goes beyond GoFundMe. It talks more about some of the other websites out there as well that you can use to raise money for personal expenses, some of the strategy behind it, some of the tips and tricks, um, so really what goes into a, a great playbook, if you will, for launching a GoFundMe campaign, which you can check out at crowdcrux.com slash GoFundMe audio. I will link that up as well down below. And finally, for those of you out there that that I've really had enough. You've been hunting around. You really just wanna go straight to the source. You kinda of want a machine, if you will, that will do this for you. This is really the paint by numbers template. This is the big daddy uh, education you know, tool, which I think that everyone should have in their arsenal if you really wanna raise the maximum amount when it comes to your GoFundMe campaign. And this is all the scripts, the templates, the tools, the tricks, the resources, the tutorials, 
everything that goes into really making the most of your time with this actual campaign. Whatever event has come into your life that's causing you to do this campaign, why not make the most out of it? And unfortunately, in some cases, you got to be willing to buckle down and invest a little bit in order to receive that maximum return and get those maximum results which you want. So if you're ready to do that, go and check out the GoFundMe cash machine. This thing has taken me years to put together so much incredibly valuable information, things that work and actually to produce the result which you are seeking. So you can check that link out down below the GoFundMe cash machine. I think you're going to like that one a lot. But again, it's not for everyone. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Salvador Brigman. Give me a thumbs up. Come subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. And I will see you next time.